Hi there, this is James with Northern Arizona Wind and Sun. Today I want to talk about charge controllers. We're going to talk about MPPT charge controllers to be specific. But in general, what is a solar charge controller? So a charge controller is specifically used to manage the solar power and its delivery into the battery bank. Okay, so there's two kinds of charge controllers. A less conventional option and more of an old school kind of way of dealing with power would be the PWM charge controllers. There's not a whole lot of sophistication there and we're not going to go into great detail about them, but they're a less conventional option to that of MPPT charge controllers. So MPPT charge controllers were like, in the last 10 years, is one of the most advanced developments in solar power delivery. So maximum power point tracking, that's what MPPT stands for is where a charge controller can actually observe the maximum output of the solar array. It can track the maximum power point and deliver that power through the system. So when a charge controller is maximum power point tracking, that means that it's able to sweep the power curve of a module. And a lot of times it does this very, very quickly. So it'll sweep the power curve of a module or an array and find the point at which that panel can provide the absolute max power or that array can provide the absolute max power and it'll use that point to deliver power to the battery bank. To do this, it has to have a wide range of voltage and it typically will have to buck the input voltage from a solar array down to that of a battery bank. So most MPPT charge controllers will have a very high and wide input voltage compared to the battery bank voltage, they're able to convert a much higher input voltage to a much lower output voltage, while it's also taking a much lower input current and boosting that to have a much higher output current. So that's a lot to take in, but basically all that is important is that the input power is almost equal less any losses through the charge controller to the output power to the battery bank. So for example, we have a 1200 watt solar array and you have 120 volts input, 10 amps. That's 1200 watts, volts times amps, 120 volts, 10 amps, 1200, which is equal to essentially 12 volts output at 100 amps. So most charge controllers have some limitations as far as how they can manage power, their input voltages, and their output currents. But in general, that's how they work. Essentially, it can take a high input voltage. Let's assume that the solar array's maximum power point is at 120 volts, and at that voltage, it can deliver 10 amps. The charge controller, as it sees it, sees 1200 watts of power input. It will then convert that to 100 amps output pushing that power to the batteries, and let's just say the batteries at this given moment in time are at 12 volts. So power in equals power out. So behind me I have a few different charge controllers and they all have a variety of limitations. For example, in most cases, a charge controller is gonna have two limitations and this is gonna help define what you can put into it or whether or not it's suitable for your application. And there's also other limitations, but generally you're gonna have a maximum input voltage and a maximum output current. In some cases you have charge controllers that only work on 24 and 48 volt battery banks. Some of them only work on 12 and 24. Most charge controllers can work on a few different battery voltages. Some of them can work on all battery voltages from 12 to 60 volts. So it kind of just depends. But generally when you're trying to pick a charge controller for a given application, if you're not set on a particular brand, you want to figure out how much solar power you need. Then at that point, you need to figure out how you want to configure your panels. That's going to define the input voltage. Charge controllers, again, they're going to have an input voltage limit. At that point, you'll know what kind of battery voltage you have based on the rest of your system design. So whether it's 12 volt or 24 volts or 48 volts, whatever it be, you're gonna have the output current requirement at that given voltage. So if you have a 1200 watt array on a uh, 12 volt system, that's 100 amps output. That means you need a charge controller that can handle 100 amps output. If you have that same array on a 24 volt system, 
you only need half as much output, 50 amps. And if you have that same array on a 48 volt system, you only need a quarter of the output, 25 amps. So you can see how the charge controller's scale changes by battery voltage, all because the, when the voltage increases, your current can decrease. This is one of the advantages of going with a higher voltage battery bank. That's a different video. You can check that one out. Anyways, maximum power point trackers, they have the advantage of being able to track the maximum power point of an array, pinning at the most optimal point, and being able to deliver the maximum power the array can possibly deliver. That's very important if you're trying to get the most from a solar array. You want to be able to grab that maximum power point and put it into the batteries because that's the max power the array can deliver. Alternative charge controllers can't do that. They just dump power into the batteries and they can't optimize their input to the batteries at the maximum power point in the array. Arrays output do not necessarily correlate, especially at their maximum power point, to that of a battery bank. Now, there are some limitations. You want to make sure that your input voltage is you know, much greater than the battery voltage. You wouldn't want to use a 12 volt panel, for example, on a maximum power point tracker to charge a 12 volt battery because you won't have what we call enough headroom. So you have the battery voltage, the max charge voltage of the battery, let's just say it's 14 and a half volts. Your solar array output voltage at maximum power point needs to be much greater or at least decently greater than that charge voltage. Otherwise, you'll run out of headroom and the charge controller won't be able to do its job. It won't be able to track effectively. Maximum power point trackers are great when you have arrays with higher input voltages um, and you need to convert back down to a lower voltage. So they're really good for that. And that's how you want to optimally design. So if you have any questions about this, which you probably will, our team can help put a system together for you using the right charge controller with the perfect array and the right battery combination and make sure that everything just works great together. And uh, yeah, give us a call and we'll put something together for you. Details below. Thank you for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, please like, subscribe, and comment.